Hello. So we basically know what we're going to do. But the question is, how do we do it by the rules? Yeah. We're so, looking at the rules now for changing playbooks, um, because that is what we believe Grigsby is going to become a uh, a faceless. Now I'm looking. We're, I'm reading up the apocalypse world. Um, changing character type. Change your character to new type, which is what it meant. The player keeps their old character playbook for reference and transfer the sort of their character to new playbook. The idea is that the character keeps everything belonging to their intrinsic self, stats including hex, and moves and improvements. Um, this is assuming it, this is a type of advancement. Um, it leaves blind, behind everything belonging to their old life. So if the hard holder becomes a driver, they would leave their holding behind, for example. And they get everything belonging to the new life. New moves and new gear. So I believe your stats would say the same. But Well, that's that's terrible, that, then. That's a terrible faceless. <laughs> yeah, that is, a, one. that is the absolute op opposite of a faceless. <laughs> um. <laughs> hmm. That was for improvement. Let me see if there's something for if it's different when your life becomes untenable. Yeah, yeah it, it, says, it says follow the rules for improvements when your life becomes untenable and you choose this option. So your your stats unless you're well, unless your stats would actually change like fictionally, but that's there's not really a precedent for that in the Apocalypse world. Um now, how bad of a faceless is Grigsby? Because um, hard is your main thing, right? As hard is, is a faceless is the main thing, and I've got a zero right now. But your mask gives you a bonus, at least. I believe that's helpful. Um, let me check. Playbooks extended. So... You always start with a mask. Um, and I thought you get something when you get your mask. Or is it just you get a downside when not having You get mask? a downside when you take it off. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'm it's a really drastic tempted, enough change. Yeah, I'm really tempted to say you can just change your stats, honestly, <laughs> if, if everyone right. else is cool with it. Yeah, that works. There's narrative precedent for it. Okay. And it, it just means things intrinsic to your previous self, is what it says. Stats yeah. are just given as an example. All right, you want to hook me up with a new uh, character sheet so I can yeah. fill this Nazi monster out? And you guys can... Grieve of Grigsby appropriately. I get to attend my own funeral here. Well, yeah, that's my, that was my <laughs> question. Um, so I just gave you a new playbook. Um, Twigsby. New character sheet. New what? <laughs> Twigsby. Yes. Twigsby. <laughs> so um, we described, so we talked about it off stream, but yeah, what what happens narratively? Does Grigsby just pass away then? Like, does it seem like he's full undead? There's... I feel like... Yeah, I think... We're dragging you back to the yeah. day, and you're dead, and then, like, halfway by through, you, like, grab, grab my arm, and like, I'm not dead yet, asshole. And if I do die, delete me my internet history. And just... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we talked about it. Do you guys go to Mimi? Um, right. Yeah, is it, is it like that, or is it faster than that? Like, does it just happen on your own? Yeah, do, like, do the others know that you are back and you are you? As in, do, are they aware that Grigsby's live in this new form? That would be interesting. I don't think... I think they wouldn't. I think, like, maybe Mimi found out and, like did this whole thing on her own. Okay. So now, as far as in the fiction, normally bodies are also sent down there and processed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your body probably got sent down there, and when she saw it, she decided to uh, see if Haas could help undeadify you. Okay. 
All right, I like that. Um, stranger things than wolf bears in this the here rig. Are, we've already seen stranger <laughs> things in this very thing that's happening. Honestly, uh, I, I like this a lot. So, man, well, I was. Yeah, just on her own. It was like just her with like Hoss on a radio talking her through it in like this probably like dark room. Um, yeah, and, and she's obviously very stressed. Um, but yeah, we just sort of see like a flash of that or like a montage um, of that and, and no one else is aware. <clears throat> and yeah, as far as the world is concerned... Grigsby is dead. Mimi, Mimi and Hoss are the only ones who know. Um. Oh, here's something. Uh, when you inflict harm on another player character, they get plus one hex with you. So I did give you one harm. Oh, That's true. oh, oh good. I would have gotten an advancement. Yeah. So, <laughs> advance. Well, you still keep your XP, and you are still technically the same person. Um, All right, terms, so like, I start you, you with an your, advancement. I would imagine that you keep your Hex. That's the thing, because you still know them. They just mm -hmm. think you're dead, so I imagine that Whisk's and Kim's Hex with you um, would reset down to zero. Okay. Uh, you mean go up to zero? <laughs> or that, yes. <laughs> Only Hoss and Mimi know the truth. Well, this just got much more fun. Yeah. Um. Let me know when you're when when we're ready to continue, Zen. The uh, what? Have you picked a name out yet? Um. No, and I'm not going to. Okay. I mean, you can refer to me however you wish, but I don't think. I don't think this no particular thing has a name. Okay. You still speak and think, but you just have shed the idea of a personal name? For, for the moment. I mean, a, a name will probably be bestowed upon this thing, but... Yeah. Do you right still now have I've all got... of your old memory? Like... Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I don't identify as Grigsby anymore, so... I will still call you Grigsby in terms of the fiction, as I still have to... Rep it's, it's just easier. Right. Um, okay. I, I have written Twigsby in for the name. <laughs> as, a, as a placeholder? Yeah. I might, I might call you that, just to... Just to differentiate it's, it's it. A good, That's yeah, fine. It's a good placeholder. Okay. All right. So, what do I get? so while that's going on, um, time a, a bunch of time passes. I uh, would absolutely believe. Sure. It's probably it's probably another about a week. I'd say. Um, Fleece was, of course, pissed when Bean was killed. Um, However, and, and of course, uh, all of her gang. Um, so I think that while there is, I guess, a bit of a time slip going on, we might just sort of see scenes and then like cut forward a day or two to another scene instead of being more hour by hour. Um, I think the next thing that we see is... Kim... You are not so much blamed for Bean's death at all, um, but I think that she wants your, like, you have told her your side of the story. Uh, I, I think he's, yeah, he's someone talking to him in real life. Sorry, yes, my mom. Yes. That's um, fine. So I think that, uh, Fleece talked to you and asked you for your side of the story. Um, I assume you told her it. It's it's. I sure. I don't think she blames you. I don't think she like wants to punish you. You were the victim of being uh, 
very much so. Um, and the one who killed Bean technically now is, uh... She, I, I, I... Did you tell her that you were the one to shoot Bean in the head? Because oh, she would... Okay. Um... I was like, it was coming in into the a man who just right. risked his life to save me. I couldn't. I know he was your son, but I couldn't let that happen. Yeah, and so I that's like that you... much. Yeah, so that's yeah. you finishing off telling her the story. Um, she, I think it's just you and her. Mercer's in the background, of course, but there's no one else. It's just you three. Sure. Um, and she says, He was my son, but I understand. But he was going to die anyways because of Grigsby. Unless you treated him, which I know you wouldn't have, and he didn't deserve. I think the Kim puts his hands in the air and says, It's a hard world to live in. I didn't hear what you said, sorry. It's a hard world to live in. Her. I can't imagine what it'd be like. Mash wants you dead. I can believe that. What do you want? Honestly, I. Well, I can manage to convince him to let you live. I think I can. If you, in his eyes, pay back what... I, I guess... I can make him settle for payback of some sort. You're going to work for me for pay a while back. Would you be open to doing that for the shepherds for free? Just temporarily? Man's gotta eat. And you'll be fed. I think uh, Kim thinks about it. It's like... You'd be given a shepherd's room. It's much nicer than the clinic. But Kim's not happy too much about this. Um, but I think he, he he goes along with it. I think she, she feels like he has a debt to pay because he killed this idiot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you you accept? Yeah. And um, I'm one advancement away from getting my own lab. Um, one XP or one advancement? One because um, well, yeah, one XP, one advance, whatever it is. It's the same thing, right? One, yeah, one XP. Okay. And um, I don't know. Can I read the situations? Um. I don't know if the situation itself is charged. Um, do you think that the per like the person like you can reach a, read a person in a charged interaction if you'd like to? No, like uh, I have multiple people that are trying to. Uh... Oh, the larger situation. Yeah. Not not so much just the conversation. Not with this police. conversational situation, but like, I want to read the situation. Okay, what do you do to, to try to read it? Well, I know that um, for whatever reason, this was when he was killed. And Bean's father wants me dead. And Whisk seems to be wanting me dead, too. So I think... Um, you see Kim, like, accept Fleece's offer. And then, like, he's just really... He's up at night, he's, like, just stalking the rig. And he's, like, watching these people. 
like trying to learn about them and figure out okay what their plans who are the three are. people so whisk uh what's his face mash He's mash and uh let's all right did you know about Litz? I can't remember if you were told. Um, I made a role before. Bean mentioned Litz, yeah, as well. And I know, I know that from when I read Litz, and also okay. I knew that from when um, someone read her out to me. Yeah, one of other, Litz's other customers. So I know yeah, Litz is you're right. Why don't I read the situation? Okay. Let's read the situation. <laughs> so many awful rolls. Is that another double one? Yes, another mm-hmm. double one. <laughs> Four ones in a row. Oh, golden. Okay. Wait, I don't even know <sighs> what could happen. Oh, ask anyway, but prefer for the worst. Uh, which yep. enemy is most vulnerable so, to me? Enemy that is most vulnerable... I would absolutely say Litz because Mash is a shepherd and Whisk has a security and you've seen her with work with a knife. Alright. Well So Litz has two kids. How do you kids. want to make this the worst? When I when I go for Litz? You go for Litz? Or yeah. Okay. I, I try and use this information to take out Litz. Okay. Um so do you want me to like describe how I would do it, or? No, I think that this is uh, that would probably be some another role which would have another bad thing on its sure. own six minus. Um, yeah. Let me check something. Um, it could be that. I like that actually. That's not important anymore because Greeksby's dead. <laughs> A few of them. A few of my plans have been changed. Um, a lot of them, actually. Okay. Yeah, I I think I know what it is. Um, okay. I don't think I'm going to tell you, but I I know what it, what is happening. Sure. So describe what you do. So I think like we have a few days, and then like him. Like waits until he knows Litz is alone. He just walks into her room with his pistol, with his revolver, and okay. um, this is like he just points at points the revolver at her. Are her kids there? Does she have kids? Um. You, you, so you just like sort of walk. She has kids. You just sort of walk into the room. Yeah. Basically, like, she okay. doesn't. If it's locked, like I take it down or something. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm just doing it really With quickly. that, before we see what you see, um, I think that my GM move is uh, we flash back probably a, 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 just a short while. Um, earlier that day, likely. She is uh, visit. She's buying groceries at your place again, Whisk. Um, uh, and she mentions it to you. She mentions that she saw uh, I don't think you, I. I think that Litz saw you following her and says to uh, Whisk that she did, um, and and of course she, you believe the fake stories that she told you, um, and mm-hmm. so she she thinks that he is uh, now gonna return, and so she she asks for your help. Mm-hmm. Um, do you provide her with home security? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Kim's going to kick that door open and there's going to be a couple of dudes with, like, a shotgun. <laughs> okay. Is... So, yeah, I think... Uh, how many? Two, three? Uh, four. Four? All right. So, Kim, you kick open the door nice. and you recognize all of them as four of Whisk's employees, armed and ready. They just sort of, like there's this moment where they just grin like they knew you were coming okay what do you do and this is not even in the room 
No, but this is not the only room, I think. I think she... Uh, actually, no, there would be the only room. Let, let's the next kids are staying over at my place for the night. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think Kim's, like, just... Sounds worse lits. Like, very angry. Um, I think in this sort of, like, angry smile... Um, who would well is Broth there? Like he's your assistant manager guy. Is is someone that? Uh, Broth's not much of a fighter. All right. Um, who we got? I think there was one other named. Oh no, it was only Broth and Kettle were the named people, I believe. So this is someone new. Um, what's his or her name? Uh, let's look at the names. Mister Spice Roy. <laughs> By pepper. I like pepper. Pepper's good, yeah. Yeah, okay. Guy or girl? Uh girl. Okay. So yeah, pepper um like casually cocks her shot off her sawed off shotgun at you and says, She's not here, and you aren't gonna hurt anyone anymore. Oh she she wants to attack me? Said, no, she's she's she uh points it at you and then like motions for you to then yells like get inside and sit down and they're all your gang is three harm right mm -hmm. so they all have three harm variations of weapons so i think kim uh just says this hasn't doesn't have to involve me and you or anyone in this gang I think he's been set up. It's like being. Your lies aren't going to work here. Your manipulation. You set up town in our in our own store in Whisk's store. Whisk, you told did you tell them like the whole story that you believe about? Like, did you tell them why that list lists need protecting? Yeah, I think the people there would know. All right. So, um, they wouldn't say it outright, but they, she goes on a, a short rant about the horrible thing that you did to Litz. Um, and you have no idea what she's talking about, of course. Well, I do know because I read it out of Wills. Oh, yeah. You, you, you know about the lie. I keep forgetting that. Yeah. It seems so, like. She's still straining the story. Listen, touch lips. Come here. Sell this fucking bullshit about why she's trying to spy about me. I haven't done nothing to her. Not yet. Yeah, you barge in here with a gun. It's all Just the justice of the we river. got left in this world. It's the justice we got on our hip. You want me to sit down? I'll sit down. But we're going to talk. Fine, then. All right. What would you like to talk about? So can and, we... uh, she said, the, all the others are like, uh, Pepper sits down. Um, I assume with you, but the others are all standing and ready. It comes like, listen, there's something I got here. It's been going through my things. It's spread lies about me. I don't know what she knows or thinks she knows. I promise you, I never touched her in the way that she's been saying. Anyone that way done a lot of horrible things to survive. But I ain't done that. I'm trying to convince her or that, uh, yeah, yeah, this is I roll with that. hot. All right, roll hot. This is absolutely nice. Okay, okay. Um, so and what important. you you wanted to just you wanted to talk it out, I believe, right? Yeah, I want to talk it out. I want her to understand. I'm very angry, and yeah, Liz was going to have a bad day, but uh, this is uncalled yeah. for. 
Pepper like thinks to herself for a moment, is quiet. And then, if you're right, Litz really is the one who broke in. Really is lying. Well, I'll go grab Whisk and Litz. We'll all have a nice family sit down. Fine. Does that work? Fine. Don't, don't. All right. All right. And she like looks at the others. He's really look after Kim. I'll be back. Whisk. About five ten minutes later, there mm -hmm. is a knock on the door, and then you hear Pepper say like yell through the door that it's her. All right, I'm going to answer it. Um, talk about that after Zen. Uh, yeah. Pep, what's up? Yeah, we, we have Kim, I guess, in custody. They're cooperating. But, uh... Well, Kim's basically calling Litz a big liar. And uh, they kind of made a pretty convincing case with an escort. He'd like to chat with you and with Whisk, or with you and with Litz and Kim, just on the couch. Lay it all out. Okay, um... I'll go, but if Litz doesn't want to, she doesn't have to. And I, I think, is Litz in earshot of this? or? Uh, yeah, I live by myself usually, so it's not a very big place. Okay. Litz says, yeah. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, we'll talk. And she's, like, nervous, but doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I know where to go. I'll tell Pepper to watch the kids. Okay. Uh, yeah, Pepper nods and does just that. Okay. Um, on the way, Litz... I think Litz just is quiet. Do you t talk to her at all? No, I think this is a very kind of, like, quiet... Like, right. Let's just go and talk, and then we can leave yeah. and you open the door um, i assume that you didn't try to escape or anything no um, like okay. there's no escape unless i leave the rig and uh, kim is like obligated to help the rig right now okay so yeah as you expect you walk in and uh three of your people it's locked again um but one of your people open the door for you Mm -hmm. and let you in. They greet you, both of you. And, uh, what do you do? Litz is quiet, and, let, and she would quietly sit down on like the opposite side of, from Kim. In fact, I don't think she would physically sit down. I think she's like, this is her house. She, she would probably just go stand or sit, uh, probably like lean against the wall uh, in mm -hmm. a corner of the room on the opposite end of Kim. Yeah, and then I'll kind of try to position myself between them. Sit down. Are you, like, physically between us? Yeah. Well, like, so I can't actually see her too well, because you're in my way? I mean, not necessarily not... in the way between, yeah. but... Okay. Well, like, in a triangle-ish. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, like, kind of, like, looks at Liz, at Liz, some looks at Liz, and he looks around the room. And I think he's like trying to figure this out himself. Like what? What is really this is motivation for spreading these lies? And uh, he he looks at this and says, uh, "Listen, I stand. You guys are probably angry at me." 
I'm really, I'm really upset. It's this whole thing. It's not the way I wanted this to go. And now I don't see any way to solve this with talking it out. Now, let's you and I, we both know that these rumors you've been spreading about me, they're just lies. I ain't had time to do those sorts of things to you. Show me your medical pad. So Kim like pulls out. I assume you're talking about the uh, the field guide. Yeah, the field guide. That's like an iPad. That that thing. Okay, sure. Kim's like this thing. This is what it's all about. I want to see it? What are you gonna do to it? I need to see something on it. The so, uh, Kim looks between her and the disc and hands it over. Okay. For a few minutes. She is scrolling through it and looking through it. Um, Whisk or Kim, do you two say anything in the meanwhile? Mm. I think Kim is just like studying her. Okay. Um, would you like to read a person? Yeah. Okay. Let's roll double ones again. Not next time. Better. This time. Not quite. You may ask one question, I believe. Off of memory, I'll check, but I'm pretty sure it's just one. Yep. How could I get your character to be on my side? How could you get Litz to be on your side? I think you have an extremely small amount of time to do this, okay. so like seconds. Yeah. Um, you would have to keep her from fine. You would have to think. I think it might dawn on you. Um, she. might know the person or might have known the person that you killed mm. and was just looking for verification you would have to somehow convince her that this is not from that person and she's Shit. yeah and i think she's going to find there's like a name or something she's going to find on the medical pad in moments if she keeps looking I feel like that's something i might have done in the past but i obviously don't have access to it now yeah if she flashback knows, move. You could flashback move. This. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's my only real option there. Flashback and say I removed all evidence. Um, so I'm actually gonna flashback uh to uh Kim and Grigsby. And we see like Kim like thinking about alive Grigsby? Dead group dead dead Grigsby. Okay. And uh, we see uh Kim like in the past, like he's like freshly removing all these like names from the clothing and you know from the uh, from the field guide and from all the paperwork. Like it probably was like a little bonfire he burned right after he he killed the first angel with like the, all the previous records of where he's been, just to keep yeah. warm and also protect myself. But also we see like after Grigsby dies, uh, Kim's like alone with his body and trying to decide whether to revive him or not. And instead, like, Kim plugs into the Maelstrom. And okay. And he uploads a file to the Maelstrom. It's like, shit, if somebody else can do what I do, I'm make sure. If they look, they find... They find what something What files? Else. I, I think, like, he just... He, he, 
like I want when somebody asked a Maelstrom question, like the answer they get back is slightly different than reality. So I think like instead of us seeing Kim murdering the old angel, we just see Kim like coming across his dead body. So okay. Um like, so you maybe, want to actually yeah. change change the truth of the maelstrom. You want to have it hide the truth. Right. That's what I want. Okay. Um and you have this is with Grigsby's body that you're doing this? Yeah. Okay. Um Sounds like you're using augury. Okay. But it's also the flashback move. Yeah, and so let me just check something. Um But what do you want me to roll? Where's the flashback move? Where's the flashback move? It's near here. We go. It's a when you it's declare a retroactive, you already set something up. Yeah. Sorry, I said it's a move waterfall. You you do your augury and then you do the flashback to see if the augury augury actually yeah. did anything. Okay. Okay. So yeah, augury first. All right. So see it's partially. All right. That's pretty bad for augury. Well, augury is a nasty yeah. thing to see as bad. Um, like so insert on a hit into the world psychic maelstrom, and it'll persist for a while without my maintaining it. All right. Um. So it is not broad. It is not deep, and it does contain bleeding. All mm -hmm. right. Let me. Write that down. Bleeding about. Yeah, I don't know if how that's going to manifest, but it'd be like the world has changed somehow. Yeah, exactly. The, there's some sort of bleed effect from you, like inserting information about yeah. you not killing this angel. Yeah. Um, Maybe that's what's glitching the field guide out. You don't know. Yeah. What were you saying, Zen? Did you actually have to use Grigsby's body to do this? Like, what? what is the... What's the catalyst to you doing that? I must use somebody who's unconscious or you died have to in use... my care. Yeah. So it's Grigsby's body. Um, Ooh. I yeah, like this, the... this, this is going to get real interesting. What if yeah. I... <laughs> I have an idea. Let me whisper it to Zen and check something real quick. Uh, um... All right, I'll, I forgot whispering. I'm just gonna say it. What if under your face, New Grigsby, you have this angel, this dead angel's face? Oh shit! That's the bleed. Sure, I, I I was gonna suggest that since Grigsby doesn't like secrets and such, maybe he keeps getting flashes of these two different things in his in his mind because he was the antenna into the maelstrom. Sure. So, like, he, he sort of knows what's going on, but not really, and, and yeah. will be on the hunt to figure that shit out. All right. Basically going to um, have a huge plant monster trying to figure out your... <laughs> all right, I like that, yeah. So it, it works for the most part, but it wasn't broad, and it wasn't deep, and it bled. And so the truth, it's the truth, um, the truth that was covered up there. bled into Grigsby, mm -hmm. which makes sense, because it's totally what he's all about. Yeah. All right. And that's why Kim was not happy about Grigsby to start with. It was like, only a matter that's of time true. before the truth comes out. And now you put the now truth in there. Now you literally are the truth. Yep. Alright, so that part worked. Um, you, as far as if anyone opens their mind to the Psychic Maelstrom, they will see that. All right, so let's um, do the cover. And then this, you also mentioned, like, covering up. You... you mentioned during your flashback that you were like erasing any aspects of yep yeah so that's mostly what this will cover physical parts this mm -hmm. flashback roll that's plus sharp on a 10 plus it's just as you say on a seven to nine yes but there are... but here at a crucial moment which we're at already <laughs> oh boy the mc can introduce some hitch or delay okay all right so i think that you like i think that this field guide was probably written um by the person who you killed <laughs> okay. um, and you didn't replace the names or anything you just like and so at the end when she gets to like the end it's uh of this field guide it says written by and then it's just blank and she's like it 
So I think that's what she sees. Um, she stops, okay. obviously, sort of frozen, just looking at it. Uh, and you know what she's... I think you have read her. You know what she's looking at. Yeah, it seems like um, sweat. And in order... Yeah, and she says, what's... As a reminder from the Rita person, um, in order to get her on your side, you're going to have to convince her that you weren't the one to, to kill him. And so right. she says, what's this? There's there's nothing here. Look. And she like would show you Whisk. Um, I don't know if you've seen the field guide before, but she reaches it out. She like shows you it. Yeah, like I'm familiar uh, with what it is. I don't know if I've like yeah. skimmed and it, through it or it's anything. It's probably like an actual... Uh, digital PDF or something mm-hmm. that's that's being skipped through. She's on the last page, um, and it just says this like it says written by blank space. She says there should be someone's name there. Y- yeah, I don't follow. The, like there was something confused. He says, "I think it was written before the fall, before the apocalypse." She shakes her head and she says, I was, uh, there's someone I knew who was putting together something like this. He, he, she'd name him. Um, Setter is his name. That's, that's the name of the, the previous angel. She says his name was Setter, and uh, we were close once. And he decided he would travel. He wouldn't settle down here in the rig. He'd show up here eventually. But first he was going to travel around, learn all he could about medicine, getting people right again. And he'd filter everything that he knew put it in, he 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 said he'd write it down but uh yeah i've seen something like this before and she like is motioning to the actual object of the the ipad thing itself and Tim like just shakes his head he's like no and i've seen this that is from before the fall this is hundreds of years old if it was hundreds of years ago how is it still working? It's not that old. Neither is, uh, what is it, that red, I don't know what they call it, like, vehicle that you came with. I've seen that before. Snowmobile. Yeah, she, she says, I've seen that snowmobile before, too. Something like it. And yeah, she, she yeah. turns, yeah? I scavenged it. Sorry? But... He was like, yeah, I, I scavenged it. This is, this is all from before the fall. Same place I get all my tools, all my meds. She won't tell anyone. She turns to Whisk and says, Whisk, I just have this really bad feeling that Kim right there I think that uh, I can't prove it. I just, in my gut, Kim killed Setter. So Kim just, uh, he shakes his head. He's like, I kill a lot of people in my time. But I, I, didn't, I wouldn't kill an angel. Listen. I, we could go through this whole bullshit where it'd be like, oh, she, she, you were lying before, and now you're just changing your story. You got something out for me. Listen. I don't want that. I got. I made a deal. Now I'm going to try and help this rig. Kim. Kim. Did you kill Setter? Would you like to read Kim before they respond, and then you can ask if they're telling the truth? Yeah. All right. Reading a person is sharp. It is sharp. The kid's going to say no, either way. Yeah, I I mean, yeah. 
okay. one hold. So yeah, I'm telling the truth. Shame we're losing Grisby. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know Kim is lying. Okay. Kim, God, that's damn one it, thing. You sunk, bitch. You can't augury your way out of other player character moves. Unfortunately. Let's. I think it might make sense to take a break here, especially since I'm getting a phone call and the truth was just revealed. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll be right back. Might be right back, guys. Where's Discord? Oh, I have it closed. Hold on.